And now, it's that time of the week once again. Welcome to the Departure Lounge Podcast with your hosts, Tom Whittle and Steve Waldridge. Your ticket to the home of aviation podcasts. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the flight. Good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to the Departure Lounge uh, podcast here on the Departure Lounge YouTube channel, Visions Aviation, and for the first time uh, in the show's history, we're live on Twitch as well. I uh, hope everyone is doing well. Thank you for persevering with us. We had uh, a couple of uh, issues um, that we've now ironed out, so we are good to go. Um, I'm just going to get that pulled there, so that's good, so now it should be fine. Uh, yeah, hope you're all well. Uh, my name is Tom Whittle, and joining me this evening is, of course, our wonderful co-host, not that one, that one there. It's uh, Steve Waldridge. Steve, good evening to you. How are you this evening? Yep, evening, Tom, evening, everyone at home watching us this evening. I hope you're all well, and uh, it's always a bonus. It's a bank holiday weekend. I hate Mondays at the best of times, so the fact I don't have to go in tomorrow is a absolute bonus. What about yeah. yourself? <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, how has your bank holiday weekend been so far? Yeah, nice. So spent yesterday doing a little bit of spotting down Bournemouth with uh, Jack and Isaac, a couple of decent young lads into their spotting down there. We saw uh, Ryanair, Chewy and a uh, Louder, which was pretty much the reason I went down there. So that was good. So yeah, other than that, today I was just a lazy Sunday, watched a bit of football and uh, got ready for this pretty much. Fantastic. Wonderful stuff. We'll bring you back shortly. Uh, also joining us this evening, I'll explain why the spinny wheel of destiny is behind me, but uh, joining us this evening as well is uh, our favourite northern man, it's Ian Hartley. Ian, good evening to you. How are you on this Sunday evening? I'm very, very good, thanks Tom. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. I had to kind of think of then if, we, if it was Sunday and I was like, because I'm so used to like doing this on a Wednesday, but yeah, yeah no, all good. Uh, all good. Not too bad here, a little bit. Um, hectic for the week and obviously not been very well, but I'm over that now, so all good. Yeah, yeah, but uh, like you say, at least it's a bank holiday weekend and you can have a just have a chilled out evening, really, and just have a rest tomorrow as well, can't you? Pretty much. And then pretty back much. to work Tuesday. Yes. Yeah, how's your bank holiday weekend been so far? I've not really done much, to be quite honest, Tom. It's just like a normal weekend, to be honest. it's uh, I went fishing today and um, that's about it, really. Washing, cooking, cleaning, shopping, Standard. all the rest of it. Yeah, it's boring stuff to be boring. honest. Yeah, standard boring stuff. Weather's, weather's turned a bit nasty up here as well. It's uh, it's been really, really nice all week, and then you get to weekend and it's like drizzled all day today, to be quite mm. honest. So, yeah, it's not really do much, can quickly. you? Mm. Yeah, it's wonderful. Um, well, we'll bring you, bring you back very, very shortly. <laughs> where's he? Sorry, can I just make Go comments on, on this? Go on. <laughs> Where, where's Ian Hartley from? <laughs> Go on, where are you from? I'm from Preston up in Lancashire, uh, Max Jet. Good lad. TV Live. There we where go. Where are you First from? In the evening. Yeah, where are you from? Yeah. <laughs> but we'll bring you back it. shortly so you can find out his answer. Yep. Uh, and uh, our guest for this evening, um, known in some quarters uh, as Mr. Encyclopedia, you'll find him on Speedbird TV. Uh, as Mr. Knowledge himself, it's Matteo Mariano. Mar uh, Matteo, good evening to you. Welcome to the show. How are you doing? Today? Hello, hello, hello. Happy Sunday, everyone. Thanks Happy for having Sunday. me. How are you, you doing? All right. Good? Yeah, I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad, thank you. Um, thank you, obviously, for coming onto the show this evening to talk to us. Obviously, you've been very busy uh, over this weekend as well for people that have watched your, um, you know, watch Speedbird TV and things like that. So yeah. it's nice for you to spare a bit, <laughs> spare some time for us. No, it's been a great week, and uh, no, it's been lovely to be here tonight. Thank you. Fantastic, fantastic. How, obviously, barring the obvious for those that obviously watch you on the uh, on Speedbird TV, how has your weekend been so far? Yeah, great. Busy. Busy. <laughs> uh, we uh, uh, we pulled an all-dayer down at Heathrow yesterday. Uh, we did a stream in the morning, uh, 
those who were watching uh, will be aware. And then we spent pretty much the whole afternoon raiding the bar at the Thistle Hotel <laughs> at, uh, down at uh, London Heathrow. And today, yeah, just been with the family, eating lots, had a nice walk. It's been great. Beautiful. No better way to spend it. <laughs> oh, yes. So. Fantastic. Right, let's bring everybody back so everyone can say hello, hello. Hey, evening. How are you doing? All right. Hello, everyone. How are you doing, Matt? How are you? Stay above all right? Yeah, good, mate. All good. Happy there. Double thumbs up off Matt there. That's always good. <laughs> good <laughs> A lazy <one>. single <laughs> one for <from> me. <laughs> <laughs> good stuff. Right, so let's jump into this. So um, let's, uh, well, before we get into the comments stuff, we'll go over a few housekeeping rules. So um, you can find us on social media. We are, as I say, we're live on Instagram, not live on Instagram, but we're on Instagram, uh, Twitter, Facebook, and, of course, Twitch, which we're streaming to for the first time today night uh so if you fancy giving us a follow uh on any of those do feel free to do so um also we have a shop which steve if you'd like to show your wonderful t-shirt that's limited yeah. edition, seeing as you're wearing it this evening there it is the out of the way. Look at that. <laughs> it is the limited ed- <laughs> he's pulling the face as well he can't go wrong uh it's a limited edition uh steve waldridge cheerio my lovelies t-shirt it's his famous saying that he has uh which you can find on uh the uh, shop which is also in the description below as well uh, and of course if you want to follow in matteo's footsteps and be on the show um feel free to drop us a message on any of our social medias and we'll get you on as soon as we can. Um, right, first, a little announcement and to why the spinny wheel of destiny is behind me. Um, so we recently, well, last last week we introduced the Super Chats and uh, we figured this week we were going to do a little bit of a giveaway. Um, so what we've opted to do, um, it's entirely optional, but to enter the giveaway, I'm going to bring up the thing now. There we go. Uh, so if anybody super chats uh, £5 or more this evening, uh, we'll enter you into the giveaway, which will take place at the end of the show. Uh, what's the prize? Free merch. You can't go wrong with free merch. Literally uh, as much as you like up to a certain limit. Um, but yeah, so anyone that super chats £5 or more will get an automatic entry into uh, the draw for a chance to win some free merch and can't really turn down freebies uh, in, in this day and age. So uh, if you fancy that, just get a super chat in and we'll get your name onto the Spinny Wheel of Destiny and we'll spin it at the end of the show. So uh, now let's go through some comments because uh, they are flying in from all over the place on Facebook and YouTube. Um, so uh jack from speedboat tv says uh matt what a legend thank you jack jack is as well jack, jack. Is as well. <laughs> uh glenn uh is obviously hoping that you got your polo shirt on which of course you do oh, that way. <laughs> <laughs> uh jim gemmel saying uh after show drinks at the thistle 100 <laughs> percent uh we've got gary hughes on youtube saying evening all evening gary uh, we've got Sarah Pass, uh, says evening everybody, so evening to you. I'm literally Sarah. going to go for a small handful, I'm not going to go too mental. Gail Leary says hi, Tom and Steve. <laughs> um, Visions, of course, are here as well, saying good evening everybody. Uh, of course, we've had the comment from Max Jet Live TV, sorry, Max Jet TV Live saying evening also evening to you. Um, Shay Pell on Facebook saying hello. Um, hi, your APUs. Jack Rolls is here. He says it was a nice surprise <laughs> having a cargo jet 767 at Bournemouth today, which is what they had indeed. Uh, Transatlantic Allison is here as well as always. Good evening to you. Mm-hmm. Um, taking time out of her very busy schedule, flying 3.30s to join us this evening. So thank you very much. Uh, let's have a look. Going to go through here. Uh, Darren Smith trying to be funny. <laughs> so I'll take that. Uh, putting literally stupid chat at £5 in there. Um, it's not quite how it works. Mm. Good try. Someone had to eventually. Uh, and that, and that will, yeah, we'll go for that. Uh, and uh, Martin Waldridge. Last comment says, ahoy. Steve. Oh, yeah. Just in case you're um, not watching at the end, a big happy birthday for tomorrow. And I hope uh, Mr. Mayor buys you a, a pint of Amstel this year because you deserve it. All right, have a good birthday and I'll speak to you tomorrow. 
Cheerio, my lovely. How old is he, Stay? <laughs> um, oh, I don't know if we should say, but 43. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely job. Uh, wonderful. So, uh, as we know, Matteo is here with us. So if anyone's got any questions for uh, Matteo throughout the evening, um, do get them in and we'll get them answered uh, as quick as we can, as soon as we can. Mm. So, uh, let's get off and underway. So, Matteo, for anybody who might be watching who hasn't obviously seen your polo shirt and know anything about you, uh, just give a, a brief introduction as to who you are. So, um, I'm Matteo, or Matt, I think is uh, what most people call me. And uh, to be honest, I'm just a bit of an av geek. <laughs> um, I'm also a, a student pilot. I've been uh, doing kind of uh, ATPLs uh, for the last year or so. And I spend a lot of time around the airports, in particular London Heathrow. And uh, I've also done a couple of bits in the uh, Heathrow magazine. So that's where a few other people may uh, uh, recognise the name from. So, cool. yeah, I'm kind of out and about <laughs> doing my own thing. So. Good stuff. Good stuff. So, um, yeah, so let's let's jump into it. So, of course, you mentioned... Um, probably, you know, I think you, you spoke to us about it off-air and that, but you also mentioned... Uh, that obviously at the moment you are you're sort of going through a, a course of like becoming a pilot, aren't you? Yes. Just tell us a little bit about that and sort of um, how that's going. So uh, what was it? It would have been in November 2019. Uh, I applied for the uh, UK CAA ATPL uh, integrated course. Basically, okay. uh, the airline transport pilot's license to hopefully fulfill my dream of becoming an airline pilot. Um, I did my selection then, sadly failed, uh, did it again in February 2020, so just before COVID hit, and passed. So then I had a bit of time to spare with all the kind of COVID lockdown, so I was just making the most of going down to the airport whilst there was not really much going on, obviously out of lockdown, of course. <laughs> um, and then in uh, January 2021, uh, I started my course, where I... I'm currently based uh, down in London, uh, where I was basically uh, doing all of the uh, 13 uh, ATPL exams, which was a rough ride. Uh, it's taken a bit longer than it should have. There were a few kind of hurdles along the way, a couple that I had to redo, but I finally finished all 13 now. So uh, ground school is complete. And if all goes well, uh, just waiting on some kind of paperwork and documents, hopefully next month I'll be heading off to Florida uh, in the States, where I'll start my foundation flying and our building towards my CPL, my commercial pilot's license. Fantastic. Yeah, no, it's interesting that they make you do so much of the uh, the theory, sort of pre-doing the practical these days. But I know, I know, obviously, a lot of these companies used to do a lot of training sort of in... Uh, in Bournemouth or whatever, but I suppose the chance to go to America and fly in sort of more yeah. open air spaces and better climate and that, that must be really exciting and yeah, something no, it's, it's really great. cherished. I mean, yeah, it, it was originally supposed to be down in uh, Portugal, uh, right in the middle of Portugal. So if you kind of picture it, right in, right in the centre, basically uh, in the middle of nowhere. Um, but then we we had some pretty exciting news that they were going to then change us over to uh, Florida, which I think was quite, uh, quite well, uh, well received. Uh, by a lot of by a lot of my course mates so yeah no we're all super excited because america's so good for flying like all the air traffic control is so chilled out it's basically all the kind of airspace revolves around airplanes whereas here there's so many like obstacles and hurdles and it's a bit of a nightmare so much easier out there it's made for airplanes so we can't wait to be flying out there and i think we're flying little 172s but they're like brand new i think they're registered from 2019 so they're all fitted out with kind of G1000 glass cockpits. They've got autopilot. They've got everything. So wow, that's that's yeah, that's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's going to be great. It's going to be yeah, great. It sounds like it. Yeah, it's a, a quick comment from uh, Transatlantic Allison. Do you know whereabouts in Florida you'll be uh, doing this yet? At Sanford, which is, I think it's half an hour away from Orlando. Fantastic. So Disney World on my doorstep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah what more could you want? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And uh, he's, what, about four hours drive away? So, yeah, you've got everything nearby. It's great. It's going to be really Wonderful. Good. Yeah, Wonderful. it'd be sad to come back to the rain and the wind yeah. and that when you've uh, done it. <laughs> well, yeah. Oh. Hey-ho. I'm there for yeah, some I, I was, so, I was going to say, Transatlantic Allison's also said that you're going to be permanently skint as well, Matt. So, 
I don't think um, I don't think Disneyland's going to be an option while you're down there, is it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. You I can mean, stand think, outside and look in. Well, yeah. Well, I, you to, to be honest, I think I've got to go at some point. Like I've never been, and if I'm there for as long as I am, I think it'd be mm. it'd be foolish not to go. Absolutely, no. yeah. You, you'll get things like um, is it the Epcot Center and things like that? What are down there and all the, the um, I don't know. You know all the um, like space. Yes, type yes, places. yes. Is it the Epcot is it the Epcot Center? I think that's what it's called, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that seems to be some of that. Space yeah, travel yeah, down Kennedy there, Space yeah. Center. That's all. Kennedy Space Center. Yeah, you'll see all yeah, that as well. Really what? Awesome. Yeah, that'd be fantastic, wouldn't it? Better than Disneyland. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, think yeah. So. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. That'd be awesome. How long are you going to be there for then? Uh, between six to eight months, but that's all subject to change because things like weather can get in the way and even just the kind of scheduling. So mm. should be about six months, but wouldn't surprise me if it's a little bit more. Hopefully home for Christmas. That's what we've been told. Hopefully home for oh, yeah. that Christmas. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I've got a awesome. pen for my whiteboard, so I'm, I'm just looking for it at the moment. Um, <laughs> sorry, uh, I'll just quickly interject. Uh, Jack Rolls, thank you very much. He says, Steve, uh, I'm surprised I didn't get drenched from the cargo jet. I'm the only Muppet that did. Surprised? Oh, surprised you didn't You didn't get drenched? I think he's saying I'm surprised I didn't go down for it. Oh, all right, fair enough. Well, uh, well, two things. One, I've seen one or two at Heathrow. No, it's not quite the same as seeing it. You're in an airport. And uh, secondly, I'm pleased I didn't because they changed the runway ops mm. just as it disappeared. So I would have been thoroughly disappointed, to be honest. <laughs> so unlucky, Jack. Yeah. <laughs> what well, was it? Project 76 or something? 767, yeah. Nice. Oh, brilliant. Mm -hmm. they are yeah, brilliant. It, it came in last night, but they, there was no firm time scale of when it was going to go. And last time it came in, it never left until it got dark again. And I just oh. couldn't be doing with sitting around waiting for it, to be honest. Yeah. Jack took photos good enough. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Um, yeah, so, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure Jack will spam us with plenty of photos of it, won't he? Probably will do. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah probably will do. <laughs> uh, and he's also uh, given us a little bit more as well, which enters him into the giveaway. So, thank you very much. Your name will go on to the board. Um, we'll go with a couple of questions in the chat. One from Gail Leary. He says, uh, "Ultimately, uh, Matt, if you could work for any airline, which one would you choose?" Oh. Uh... That's a hard one. That's a hard one. Um, I think kind of aspirationally, um, I love the look of uh, airlines such as British Airways. Mm -hmm. um, I've always had a soft spot for Heathrow. So being based there would be lovely. And I think there's so much opportunity down at BA. You can start on long haul. Or, uh, so you can start on short haul, move on to long haul, then go back to short haul if you want. They've got old aircraft, new aircraft, aircraft on order as well. So yeah, no, I'd, I'd say an airline such as that. But at the end of the day, a job is a job. If you're flying, you're flying. So whoever's hiring, uh, as long yeah. as I'm flying, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you're flying, it's all that matters. Yeah, yeah definitely. That first landing into Heathrow is going to be so much pressure on the speed birder down there, mind. Um, <laughs> like, <laughs> not, yeah. not to uh, make a hash of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I'll do my best. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure they've spoken about that already. It's like, yeah, yeah absolutely. People get you. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, I'll tell you what, there are some questions coming in, so we'll take a pause for ourselves, but we will get some questions here uh, answered. So um, Terry, the artist, says, uh, I want to ask Matt, what aircraft does he want to fly ultimately? Or you know, oh. what aircraft would you want to fly, given the choice? Again, a, such a hard one, because they're all brilliant. <laughs> they're all so good. Um I get. I've always had. A, I've always had a soft spot for the Airbus. I quite like their philosophy, and I quite like how they kind of work. If that makes sense, um, they they have certain things which I think make a lot more sense. They're very based around the pilot. They seem to have de designed everything with the pilot in mind. Whereas some of the Boeing's, in particular things like the seven three seven, I sometimes sometimes it looks like they've just kind of got a bag of switches, shaking it around, and just chucked it up on the overhead panel <laughs> and hope for the best. But I love them all. I love them all. I've, I've, I've had a go in some sims on the 320 and the 73, like those kind of big full motion level D ones. And yeah, I love yeah. them both as much as each other. They've both got their pros and cons. Mm. So. Yeah, I think a few, we've had like a, a couple of pilots on previously and they've always said the transition from a 19 almost all the way up to a, a 380 is, wow. is so minimal. Yeah. Like the cockpit layout, well, obviously there's there's other there's more thrust levers and like a few other little bits, but compared to stepping from a seven five seven to a 
seven four seven. They yeah. they do say it kind of lends itself far easier to transition through the uh, the like the the uh, Airbus family compared to the Boeing family. Yeah, mm. definitely. I mean, that's, that's been part of their philosophy since day one. They've said that they want to keep the training from Airbus to Air, Airbus to Airbus as minimal as they possibly can um, to make it more appealing to airlines as well so they can spend less on their crew training and, and whatnot. So, but it definitely works. I mean, if you look at the pictures, like 320 and the 330, the 330 is basically a big A320. So, yeah, no, it's, it's handy when it's, like you say, for, for cost and all that It's uh, and yeah. training purposes. There's a lot less time on the ground training yeah. pilots. And, and maintenance as well. Mm. There's commonality in parts between all the flight decks. It definitely helps out. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Yeah. What, what about um, a turboprop like a Dash 8 or something like that? Yeah. I'm you give that a go no. as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that'd be great. Especially yeah. with airlines like Flybee now back in the air. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, being on the UK mm. license as well, uh, it'd be yeah, that'd be perfect. Yeah, you'd around. have a go at that as well, <laughs> yeah. or or Igni or something like that. What about yeah. um, what what's the ones what they fly from um, Lands End to Silly Islands? The oh, um, uh, there's like Islanders and whatnot. I was a yeah, yeah. Bus. yeah. Mm. if it flies, I'm on it. Put it yeah. Right there. yeah, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you're willing to give anything to go then? Oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, fantastic. That's the perfect day. attitude to have. It's actually quite yeah, good. Yeah. yeah, of course it is. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Trip. yeah wonderful. Um, yeah, no, right. you don't want to shut any corridors. That's for sure. Uh, no, definitely not. <laughs> Definitely no, absolutely either. not. Um, EV Aviation is here. She's also part of the Speedbird team. She says, Hi, Evie. Um, and uh, obviously approving the repping of the uh, Speedbird shirt there, Matt. So you're doing well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Awesome. Brownie points from the team. Um, my old buddy from uh, my childhood, James Story, is in the house. He's watching for the first time. He got in contact with me. He's now watching, so no pressure. Uh, he says, Matt, what would your dream, uh, basically, what would your dream plane to fly if you had? Uh, one in particular well, that you're like, I would love to just do that for one day. Uh, it's so hard to say. I guess from for a kind of... Mm, things like the 7.4, I think, would be amazing because it's the 7.4.7. They're not going to be yeah. around for much longer. Uh, I think same applies for things like the A380. Like, okay. They're getting type ratings for those nowadays are really, really hard because there aren't that many airlines that that uh, still operate them but if yeah. the opportunity was there that would probably be the first one i'd take i'd love that mm. something like that yeah. like a dying breed something like a 74 just to say that you've done it yeah no well, like, that's a fair, fair answer isn't it? Yeah. 350s i love them but i know that hopefully the opportunity will come at some point let's hope <laughs> what about like ever sort of before this era including military what what would you have loved to have uh, sort of oh, get the chance oh, to fly in Concord, <laughs> yeah, Concord, 100%. Yeah, I mean, military, but, yeah. I, I, I know pretty much nothing whatsoever about military aviation. Um, I've never gone military spotting. Uh, I guess the most into military I've ever had is I've watched Top Gun. That's, about, <laughs> that's, about, oh, that's, that's poor, with that isn't it? Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I have no idea where to. The only thing I know is that they're small and fast, and they've got fire that comes out the back. <laughs> <laughs> I was just angling towards a red carpet ticket for the uh, <laughs> second film. That's all that question was about. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can't wait to watch it. It's going to be good. Ian, yeah. Ian's a big fan of the uh, military stuff. So. I love my military I'm sure, stuff. I'm sure he'll fill you in Fair eventually enough. with a lot of things. Mm. Yeah, um, I, I admire it. I admire it. I just, I don't. I've just not been exposed to it, so I don't mm. know anything about it. I need to go to Coningsby or something like that one day. That looks mm. really good. You'll have to take me. Take I think me I in. think you do. I, I mean, you live in a. You, I mean, where do you live? I mean, you live like near London. I think you're in a position where you can uh, get to places like Lake and Heath quite easily, can't you? Yeah. yeah and I yeah. think if you, I think if you were, you spent a morning there, or a full day there, or something like that, I think you'd yeah. be converted. I think you'd be signing up for RAF. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll yeah, see. yeah, I, yeah. I, I just need to look at all the schedules because it sounds like you get like some really busy days and then some days where you'll go yeah. and you won't see it, it's just hit and miss isn't it in places like that definitely yeah mm. I need to do my homework well, a bit see what's going yeah. on i say ian knows all about that obviously like having to go to wharton and things like that like you just don't know anything that's going out at the time do you no no not at all no no <clears throat> i've got a uh, wharton aerodrome which is one of the BA bac sites so they obviously build they build the typhoons and they build the hawks there oh, as okay. well yeah, so um, 
it, it's like you say, it's hit and miss. You can spend an entire day there and see nothing. Then you can go back the next day and there's uh, a few hawks flying out or a couple of typhoons yeah. or something like that. Fantastic. We even had a couple of F-35s wow. in a couple of weeks ago, but nobody knew about it. Wow. So the kid, yeah, so that was um, that was a massive shame. But we yeah. do get some really, really good stuff going in there. And we have done all for years as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The surprise element is completely the opposite to when we're down at Heathrow. I get like emails at six o'clock every morning of like all the Google groups of like logs of everything that's doing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's opposite. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it totally is. It's just totally to miss. But when 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 you stood like uh, I mean at War at Wharton where we stand at Wharton to uh, photograph, you stood like. I don't know, eight, 60, 70 metres away from where they well, like, spool up, if you want. And when you get a couple of typhoons on full reeds, just getting ready to go, your, yeah. insides, your insides are shaking. You, you've never experienced anything like wow. it. And um, I remember a few years ago, a couple of tornadoes taking off. So these two tornadoes, I sat at the end of the runway. I was at work at the time and I'd pulled up for my break behind back of water and I, and I was stood watching these two tornadoes and they, they both like run their engines right up before they both did performance takeoffs. And I thought I was going to die, honestly. Everything was just <laughs> everything was just vibrating inside me. I've never I've never experienced anything like it ever with, with, with anything. Yeah. It, it was I'll never forget. I, I had it I had it recorded actually and then I don't know what I've done with the recording, but it's it's an experience I will never forget. Yeah. yeah it's it's, that's a, it's awesome. absolutely amazing. Oh it, it is it's it's brilliant. But it's it's like everything planes are getting quieter, aren't they now? So yeah, mm. yeah. yeah. So you, yeah. you don't get that buzz anymore, do you? No, not at all. Um, you know, not when the all. old seven fours used to go, they were <coughs> loud as anything, and now yeah. now the three eighties, you hardly hear them. No, yeah, look, it's, it, it's same. It's same at Wharton. They have like a little. Um, it's like a little red and white square. I don't know. They just call it a, a, like. A, it's like an ice cream van, if you want. It sits at the end of runway. We we like the noise. Might we a microphone out of it? You know. Yeah making sure that they're not too loud because of the residents and things like that and it's just not the same is it no mm. no, no 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 we'll move on to a question from jack rolls who will explain the reason why he's asked but he says if you had to choose between the tap air portugal or the ryanair livery which would you rather see uh, and which one would you change your battery for now we have a scale here uh, for like plane spotting and that where ian uh, gave us the suggestion that um if a tap air, tap air Portugal plane came into Manchester and his battery was low, but he had one picture left to take, he would change his battery for it because he doesn't like the planes or deliveries or anything like that. So we have a scale of like, the, you know, like a. We've, we've all done it when we've been plane spotting where we've seen like a British Airways 320 or a 319 and gone, don't really need that one sort of thing. Yeah. Um, so essentially we say we change the camera battery. Um, so which one out of those two would you see and which one would you change your camera battery for? Um, oh, maybe tap because it's a bit more exotic. That's 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 my is opinion. that to see or to change your battery for, as in, change like you know, you, you know, when a plane's coming in but your your thing's dying and you, you change your battery but let it go, sort of thing. Oh, I see. Okay, so yeah. sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would, I would, I would, uh, I would save the battery for the tap and change it when the Ryanair's going past, <laughs> yeah, it. yeah. Ian's going to yeah. sit there and be like, you're wrong. But... <laughs> no, well, I'll be quite honest with you. If that was an option, I wouldn't have even bothered getting out of bed. I would have just said it on that particular day. <laughs> yeah, especially if you're down at Stansted. I mean, you know, you've got plenty yeah. of opportunities. Yeah. Right it's there, so... Portugal. I'd just roll over in bed and put my duvet back over. <laughs> <laughs> to, to be fair, I've done it pretty much any place I go to. Um, there's always like like Stansted, for example, as you know, it's just Ryanair, just full of Ryanairs and stuff. And there's only so many. Like the maxes are fine. The maxes you can take plenty of pictures of, but the, the regular seven three seven. There's only so many that you can sit there and like video or take, and you think I kind of want to mix it up a little bit. So I'll let this well, one go. Well, that's when that's when I find things like this come in really handy. But I personally, I love number crunching. There you go. <laughs> so yeah. when number crunching. Even if you have like fifty of the same aircraft type, if they're all new registrations, you're laughing. Tick them. There you go. Off. That's what you need, Ian. What you need is a registration book. <laughs> Just on that though, what is your um? Well, this is like a two-part. Uh, like when when you were at Heathrow, uh, your favourite livery to see, and uh, also your favourite retro. It doesn't matter who that belongs to. 
Uh, favorite livery to see? Uh, <laughs> well, when the Blue Expo livery came, the big blue three eighty yeah. one. Uh, mm. Yeah, it was an Echo Echo whiskey. We were up at the Hilton Garden Inn, Terminal Two, and we watched that leave. That was amazing. That mm. was a brilliant livery to see. Uh, yeah. And then retro livery. Ah, uh, in service or like in the, either never. or. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Ever, I'd say it would probably be one of the BA seven fours. Probably Landor. Landor, oh, yeah. probably Landor. Mm. So I know that sounds like a bit of a safe option. I think loads of people would say that. <laughs> well, but, they got it nailed though. It was a great, great livery. Yeah, that, that Landor. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, that I, I, I love BEA. I'm a big fan of BEA. Yeah, that's a fantastic. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a lovely uh, livery. Yeah, and I'm a, a big fan of that Aer Lingus one, Delta Victor. Yeah, Mark. that mm. uh, that that retro there. That's like nice. That. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, yeah. Looks what what good. about the um, what about the Qatar Triple Seven, the new one? I haven't the seen two... it in person. Oh, have you not? I've 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 not seen it yet. Um, have you not? Yeah, no. I've missed it every time. <laughs> yeah, that, that, <laughs> you're right. I'll say that that's one of my favourites at the moment. To be honest. Yeah, it does yeah, look good. Definitely. Mm. And even good. the the Tap Portugal one as well. I mean, I might not be a fan of the liver what they're using, but the uh the retros, it, the retros lovely, it really really is. Yeah. But I mean because mm. cuz the thing is with a retro, it's like because they're all so colorful and unique, even if it's yeah. ugly, it's still lovely. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah like, definitely. It's it's just a lovely difference. Cuz nowadays mm. they're all kind of like streamlined and smart and quite mature about their colors. Whereas back then, you know, you'd have like these wacky liveries. Yeah. Like um, Glenn, uh, Glenn, who's watching, he was showing me all his pictures from like 2005, 2006. And all the, the times colour schemes and the seven fours that were coming into Heathrow, they were insane. Yeah. But it's like, they're not, they're not pretty, but they're really cool. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and, that's, and that's what I love about, about the retros as a whole. Yeah. I, I think it's, it's one of them. It's like, even with Landor as well. I mean, at one point, once upon a time, it wasn't a retro, was it? It, it was yeah. the standard livery, and once it's gone, you miss it, don't you? And I think that's yeah. the same with anything, isn't it? I think even yeah. with the Icelander, what they've done now, uh, people got used to the like the blue and the yellow of the old Icelander, but now they've gone to the Ryanair Icelander, if you want. Um, yeah. You're thinking, why have they got rid of the old one? And you're going to start missing the old one, aren't you? Yeah. No, mm. I, I, I'm not a huge fan of the new one. No. I call it the IKEA livery. Yeah, it's not it's the best, corporate. is it? Yeah, it's very too, corporate. Too basic, all are, too standard. They? they don't yeah. make them like they used to. No, yeah. apart from Condor, they do. <laughs> That's not because you've you just seen Alison's comment. Oh, right, right. No, I haven't seen it, to be <laughs> yeah. quite honest. I had Condor going round him yet, to be quite honest. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the Condor one, I don't think it's pretty, but if you put it in the right surroundings, it actually looks all right. The bin? <laughs> no, 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 you know what? I saw, I saw a, there was a there was a picture that someone took. I think it was landing in the it was one of the Spanish islands, and it was the gold one, like the kind of yellow, yellowy, goldy three twenty one, and it yeah. actually looked all right. Mm. Whereas when, when when I was seeing pictures of uh, the green ones down at like Frankfurt, they just looked really out of place. Yeah, they, they look wrong. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but so, I think if you put it in the right setting, I think yeah. it actually looks not as bad as everyone else yeah. says, in my opinion. So when when you when you go into work, right, uh, Matteo, in morning into Condor, and you go into dispatch office and they throw you a bunch of keys for that green and white one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what what you what's your what's your reaction? <laughs> <laughs> if it flies, I'm on it. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Oh, nice. Have you managed I, to catch the um... t-shirt coming on with that that phrase of "if it flies, yeah. I'm on it"? I can smell a t-shirt getting made. <laughs> yeah, do it. <laughs> I was going to say, have you managed to catch the better uh, better world livery BA yet? Oh yeah, yeah, I've yeah, got a beautiful that right. up on stand. Yeah, uh, I, I really like that. I really yeah, like it looks that. stunning. Yeah, it's it looks a bit odd in some pictures because it just blends into the sky. Yeah, yeah. Like when when people do their kind of sunset pictures, it looks so so nice. Mm. I love it. I'm actually due to fly uh, to Glasgow next week, and on the way back, um, according to the seat map, it says 320N. So I'm assuming a Neo. So fingers crossed. Oh that'd yeah, be, that'd be nice. Yeah, that'd be well good. Have you managed to fly on the retro BA yet? The uh, 319. No. Uh, no. 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 Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, the, uh, the only BAs I've ever flown on are just a couple of 320s. It was uh, yeah, yeah. Yankee, Oscar, November, Delta, and then Gat's Romeo from the Gatwick fleet, which was, mm. that was an interesting one. Because they're like, they're older than me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they purchased them from uh, the, the Gatwick fleet. They've got the uh, the GAT uh, registration. They're all yeah. from uh, Wizz Air, I think, weren't they? Uh, yeah, and I think some of well, uh, the one that I was on, Gat Romeo, that was uh, X Tam from South America. Of course, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. But it was like all, all, all down the back was it was all lovely, it was shiny because this was in 2016, shortly mm. after they did the kind of uh, uh, Euro Traveler short haul uh, retro fit in the cabins. So all, all down the back was lovely, all these new kind of leather pinnacle seats, all like lovely adjustable headrests and everything. Go up to the front. Steam gauges, CRT, <laughs> CRT screens, <laughs> dust everywhere. It was really showing its age. Proper old school 320. Yeah, well, really yeah. nice. I know we were talking about um, we were talking about Condor just now, and I think Ken's done one of our little ratings for it, going five out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> we do like to rate a good livery on this uh, on this uh, podcast and the channel nice. as well. So. We do right. need to do that at some point as well. We've got to finish off. We've still got a whole bunch of retros to go through, so we'll do that at some point. But uh, yes, yeah, there's, there's quite a few comments getting uh, coming through. But for those that have just joined us, um, as you, I'll just quickly mention it. Um, I say we are running the giveaway, uh, which of course Jack Rolls has entered himself into. If you super chat five pound or more to us, not right super chat, but if you super chat five pound or more to us, you enter our giveaway for some free merch. Um, also, at the same time, I'm just checking the subs at the same time. We are 10 away from 1,100 uh, subscribers. So if we can hit that at some point tonight, a, a tall order, I think. But a lot of people have subbed. So thank you for those who have. Um, but if you haven't subbed already, please do consider doing that. Um, well, we'll quickly move on from sort of uh, the whole flying sort of thing. And we'll talk about um, the sort of writing that you do for, of course, the, the LHR magazine. We, how will you involved with that like did, uh, were you approached to kind of do it or did you put yourself forward for it uh i reached out to ken so it would have been a uh, kind of middle of lockdown and so well it acted so it, it, it all started so i was um fiddling around with that website wix like where you can like create your own websites and mm. i was just typing up a few flight reviews because um, I had some like pictures of kind of uh, empty cabins from when I was flying. And I thought, oh, I might as well do something with them because they're not really going anywhere. So I started writing them all up. And then I saw Ken put a thing on Facebook and he was like, oh, um, I'm making a new magazine based all around London Heathrow. And this being kind of after lockdown had ended, but still during when there were like all these restrictions, I was spending lots of time around Heathrow, so I'd suddenly got this massive soft spot for the airport. So I, I reached out to Ken and I was like, Ken, like I haven't got much about Heathrow itself, but I'm writing a load of flight reviews on flights that have left to and from Heathrow. Would you be interested? And uh, he said yes. And yeah, so I, I, I basically took my... Um, the first one I did for him was Finnair on their 350 from Heathrow to Helsinki and back uh, up in business. Uh, which was basically taken straight from the thing that I was doing. I tweaked it. I kind of elongated it, made it all look pretty, uh, did all stuff with the pictures. And then uh, I sent it off to him. And then uh, I said, look, I've got another one on an Air France Dreamliner if you want that in the next issue. And he was like, yeah, go on. And then so on and so forth. So um, I've done mostly uh, flight reviews uh, for the magazine. So kind of just like reviewing kind of different products that the airlines have to offer, whether it's the hard products such as, such as the seats and then kind of soft products such as service catering and whatever. Um, but as, as, as time's gone on, I've tried to go more and more in depth. So I've started doing lots of research on like kind of seat names and different types of seats that they have, uh, uh, that they have on board. And then in more recent t times also, I've started kind of doing a bit more techie bits and bobs kind of away from the flight reviews. So I did a kind of, technical fact file on the uh, Dreamliner, the 350, and then the latest one, uh, issue nine, I did a piece on Storm Eunice and basically the kind of technologies on the ground and in the aircraft which make landing safe in harsh environments like that. So go and buy it. Go and buy it. <laughs> <laughs> Show Ken some love. Ken yeah, I'm sure... 
I'm sure Ken will put in the chat where you can buy it from for anyone who doesn't doesn't know and obviously didn't watch last uh, last week's episode where we had uh, him and Loopy on the show. They were talking about it and where they can buy it from. So I'm sure he'll do that and we'll put it on the screen when he does. Um, <clears throat> there you go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nothing like a bit of a yeah plug yeah a bit bit of plugging would be fine, um but yeah so obviously I mean it's obviously something you quite enjoy then going through the whole sort of you know filling people in with like the knowledge of how certain things work even if people sort of get an idea for what it's about already. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's just it's just what I enjoy doing. It's just a nice way to get it out. And even you know what, it was actually really handy because we had a radio navigation exam a few weeks ago. And uh, in that are a lot of things on ILS, the airborne weather radar, uh, which was stuff that I wrote about in the last article. And yeah, it was, it was like a win-win. You're reading pleasure and my revision <laughs> yeah, yeah. Win for everyone. But yeah, no, I mean, it is, I've, I've, I've really enjoyed it. Um, it's been, it's been great, great getting it all out there. And um, yeah, it's been, it's been nice seeing it grow as well. And also getting to know Ken, because as I said, Ken's a legend. <laughs> so yeah, no, it's great. Really enjoyed it. Fantastic. Yeah, you, I suppose through the research, you've kind of uh, built up a little bit of an understanding of people you'd you'd want to fly with and not fly with, then on basis on what what kind of things they're offering and that. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, job's a job. Whoever's hiring, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no nonsense. I like it. <laughs> not fussy, are you? No, no. <laughs> and I, yeah, it's the hard, the first job is the hardest one to get. Mm. Yeah, yeah. especially um, with the course that we're doing we get a frozen ATPL so it's your airline transport pilot's license but with no real hours on it so as far as the airlines are concerned they're taking complete newbies who haven't really flown much mm. um, obviously we've, we've done all our type ratings we've done all the stuff in the sim we've done all our kind of foundation and our advanced and our advanced flying on the on, on the prop so all the hours are there, but on the type that the airlines are flying, we haven't flown the real thing. So the first job is is always the hardest one to get. When you start racking up hours, they're then invaluable. And then that's when you can start branching out, seeing who's doing what, who's offering what, who's flying what, and then you can start mm. to think more long term. I, I, I was going to ask... Um... It's probably a silly question to be honest, because you keep saying if it flies, I'll I'll fly it. But um, if if obviously for your first job, um, with the, with the amount of cargo now that's being shipped around on planes, and, and particularly on, there's a lot of passenger planes as well, isn't there? Would you just go straight into cargo and start flying um, a cargo plane? Yeah, I'd I'd, I'd definitely look into cargo. Fly all. Yeah, yeah um, I was uh, I was hanging out with a good friend of mine. Uh, he uh, was so he was uh, British Airways and he was flying the seven four sevens until they sadly got uh, axed from the fleet yeah. and he was he was so gutted because he had his last 74 flight without knowing it and yeah yeah, yeah I, can imagine. I think his yeah. i think the last leg that he flew was actually landor as well um or some of his last flights was uh, on uh, uh, on landor and he he basically said like i need one last flight on the 74 so he went over to cargo logic and uh, decided to fly cargo for a bit. And right. I mean, the stories he was telling me, it sounds brilliant. It sounds so chilled out. Like you, yeah. you fly a big aeroplane uh, and you've got, you've got no one to look after. So it's just, it's, it's just you, your, and all the other pilots on board. You've got the galley down the back, make your own teas and coffees, walk around, mm. do what you want. It sounds, it's, it sounds really good. And, yeah. um, and it sounds like you go to some pretty interesting places as well, mm. especially like cargo hubs, such as like Anchorage. Or places like that, like airlines don't typically fly there. So lots of opportunity. In terms, of, like long term, I think I'd probably rather fly the passenger stuff. But I'd yeah, cargo, yeah, hundred percent. I'd love to do it at some point. Yeah, you'd like to give it a go. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you know, you're not just not fussy at all, are you? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> you'll never go anything. If it flies, he's on it. Yeah, yeah. If it flies, you're on it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What, what about so, um sorry sorry sir i was gonna say what about um flying I don't, we, we have a company called jmax up at blackpool airport who's like an air taxi and they have um i think or they have a couple of big private jets anyway but would you like to try flying something like that flying rich and famous about yeah would you yeah. do that as well yeah 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, i was uh in fact yesterday at heathrow uh, a bizjet pilot was with us and um she was uh 
she was showing us all her stuff that she gets up to, both in simulators and on the real airplanes, and they look so cool. I didn't yeah. realize how I didn't realize how fu like how futuristic they are. If, if you look at some of the flight decks of um, like of all these uh, Gulf streams, like the G650s and the G700s, like they're all massive screens, all touch screen. Something that Airbus only very recently bought in the whole touch mm -hmm. screen technology on their 350s. Yeah, they're so they're so cool, and they they can go up to like fifty one thousand feet. Mm. They can go really high. So yeah, again, yeah, I'd love to I'd love to look into it, especially yeah. when you know jobs are when I'm like looking around, yeah. seeing what's going on. Yeah, that's like it. I mean, they, they, they are built for the rich and famous, aren't they? They're like the Euro buses and your Boeing's are just built for the. Um, cattle class people aren't they yeah. to be quite honest so yeah yeah. Well, yeah i'll have to give you my card i'm looking for a new private pilot my one's <laughs> given up on me so uh, you wouldn't mind yeah, yeah. <laughs> is that yeah, for wood taxis <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah you'd have to be based in bournemouth i'm afraid though <laughs> it don't matter where he's based because if it flies he's on it yeah <laughs> Yeah. Honestly, uh, but talking of flying, you were mentioning about flight reviews earlier. Of course, you have your own YouTube channel, uh, yeah. which you obviously have done uh, streams and things like that on, and you've also done, like, say, the flight reviews and stuff. Um, yeah. I've checked them out personally. I think they're oh. they're pretty good. So they thank you, know, you. All, all you know, props to you. Um, thank you. Now, I know this is probably something that's a little bit maybe a bit raw still to you, but. Um, Obviously, during I think before a month or so before the three eighties came back into service, they were doing short runs to Frankfurt and Madrid. You yes. were you were booked on one. Um, yes, I was, but unfortunately, didn't manage to get on it. No equipment what change. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from obviously a, a change of plane and stuff, um, was it just purely because of the fact that like not a lot of people were on it? Do you know, or is it just no, it just so, sprung upon you? So from the uh, so from the 8th of November to the 2nd of December, BA announced that they were using the 380 to Madrid and Frankfurt for kind of crew refamiliarization. Um, because they'd been out of, out of storage, uh, or had been in storage for well over a year, they just needed to get the crews on them. And by doing the short sectors, they could train them up well. So um, I jumped on the website in a heartbeat, saw the two routes. I, I chose Madrid because it was... About 20 minutes longer than Frankfurt. Mm. So I thought more time on the aircraft, the better. And um, yeah, booked it. A BA456, because it, it was early in the morning on a Saturday. All the other days it was in the evening, but on the Saturday it was it was an early morning flight. Booked it, seat 27K, all good to go. Um, the upper deck was locked, so they sold all the 380 flights at A320 capacity. Okay. Just in case something were to happen. Hmm. Uh, so during the flight, you were able to go to the upper deck. It was all empty. You could. It was picture galore. Um, I was originally going to go with the Speedbird TV lot. They were going to do a. I was going to join them on their group trip, but I had some exams coming up, so I had to do it about two weeks earlier. But hey ho. <laughs> so we. Uh, I was checking in, and then I got a notification from BA saying that my seat had been changed from 27k to 22f. And I was like, okay, right, that's no good. Check the seat map. And it was a 3-3 three, three thing. And I was like, oh, no. no. Right. <laughs> right, okay. So I called up my good friend, Zul. Uh, shout out to Zul, uh, if you're watching. And uh, I called him up and I was like, Zul, the BA456, has it changed? Please tell me it hasn't. And this is like a glitch in the, in the BA app because I know sometimes they have their IT problems. And he was like, I'm really sorry, but it's now Yankee Delta, one of the. No. So I was like, oh, bugger, okay. And uh, this had, I, I noticed the seat map change after I checked in. So I couldn't reschedule it for free. Mm. I had to, oh. I, I was stuck with the flight. So I was like, right, okay. I was gutted, but it was my, it was going to be my first flight in 699 days. So I was like, you know, I, I'm, I'm just going to go for it. Like, I am. I am flying for the first time in absolutely ages. And uh, we were still due the, the Iberia 350 on the way back. So I thought at least we'll get a wide body in somewhere during the trip. But yeah, despite the change, it was still such a good flight. Um, I decided to book a cheeky upgrade at the check-in desk. Um, why not? Up above Europe, I just thought, you know, why not? <laughs> Might as well make the most of it. 
because I was writing for Ken's magazine as well. So I was like, oh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll make him something interesting. <laughs> so uh, so uh, we'll upgrade to business. And yeah, honestly, the crew were so good. So the reason was they need, I think it's, the 380 requires a minimum of 18 cabin crew because the, the amount of crew, it's done by the amount of seats on board, not by the passengers booked. So mm. even if there was one passenger on the flight, you'd still need the full 18 cabin crew. But there were only 13 available. So they weren't able to, they weren't able to, they weren't able to basically use the 380. So they had to downgrade it to a 320. Oh, but um, they were so good about it. Uh, during climb out, they made an announcement and they were like, firstly, you know, let's clear the elephants in the room. We're so sorry that you're not on your 380. However, we're all A380 trained. We're going to be hanging out in the galleys. So if you want to come and say hi to us, feel free. You know, we've been Wonderful. talking 380 all day oh, yeah. long. We've been flying it all week. So oh, I, I did, did the... Um... I did the 380 trip to Frankfurt during that time. Did you? How did you find it? Massively overrated. Terrible. Why? No, I'm just saying it to make you feel better. <laughs> it's the best thing I've ever done. <laughs> Dave. Dave. Did, you fly it, did you actually fly it? Or, or, or no? Yeah, no, I flew to Frankfurt and back. Nice. You enjoyed and, it? Yeah, it was ridiculous. I left at half six in the morning and I arrived back at Heathrow at quarter past 12 the same afternoon. I Brilliant. only spent an hour in Frankfurt. How do you manage to turn around that quick? Just run out, run back? Uh, no, I was um, I was classed as um, domestic because I never physically uh, landed. So I just went through and just went straight back to the gate I'd left from. So I never went through a passport control. Oh, that's handy. Oh, that's yeah. really Well, Ian would tell you I was faffing massively about that because I'd never have had enough time if I'd had to go through a passport. Oh, yeah. Control. Oh, you, you were flapping, weren't you? Yeah, I mean, people on our flight, they were they had to go out of Madrid and back in because I don't I don't think they had the same service there. But they had a, it was a one hour and twenty five minute turnaround at Madrid because it was meant to be an A three eighty. They gave it one hour and twenty five minutes, and I think they all made it back in time. Um, but yeah, no, that was that sounds manic. I couldn't I couldn't do it. <laughs> oh, you know, literally ten minutes that. ten minutes after getting off the um, aircraft, I was back on the gate. Yeah, oh, that's brilliant. That's so, so good. Yeah, no, it was awesome. I'm sorry you missed it. it, it no, was... it's fine. I mean, I've I've been lucky enough to have already gone on four three eighties on Emirates and Air France. In fact, the Air France one was from Heathrow to Paris. Mm. Oh, really? Yeah, back in 2010. That's when so, they were doing uh, crew training, wasn't it? To yeah, get actually yeah. going, yeah, crew training for for three eighty. Uh, when Air France actually got them, managed to see a few of the the three eighties from Air France go into Heathrow. So that was quite um, yeah, that was cool. That's time. in Ken's Lots magazine of, you know, in one of the issues. Makes uh, up for the fact that you can get on that one, but I believe yeah. they are still running, aren't they? They're still running uh, 380 flights on to Frankfurt. I believe it's cargo only. Yes, yes, it's not bookable. Yeah. Don't worry, I've looked. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just, just thinking. That's all. Just thinking ahead. Yeah, no, 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 no. It's uh, it's not bookable. Um, I think uh, I, was, I was talking to one of the guys, and I think they said something along the lines of. They're doing cargo only because the, it was only the 380s that were free for the route. Um, and if they ended up putting passengers on it, they'd need the 18 cabin crew, which they don't have. They just don't yeah. have. Yeah. So they figured that they could save more by just doing cargo only and not making it a revenue service, like a bookable service for passengers. That's fair enough. That's, yeah. that's fair enough, isn't it? Yeah, um, obviously, like I said, apart from apart from that, obviously you have done some other flight reviews. Oh um, yeah, and you did the obviously you mentioned the the Iberia three hundred and fifty on the way. Was it on the way back? You said on yes. the same one. Yes, I was on the way back from Madrid. Yeah, I was quite surprised because obviously I watched it. Um, uh -huh. I was thinking, you know, three hundred and fifty Iberia, Spain's biggest airline, sort of thing, and it, it wasn't all that it was. It was sort of lived up to, was it? You 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 weren't a massive fan of it. I need to be, uh, careful yeah care, yeah whoop. yeah they they did everything right but i felt that they didn't go above and beyond the way that i'm used to on airlines such as easyjet or british airways yeah let's put it that way That's, so, i think we'll, we'll leave it at that i think just in case we go, we go yeah. any sort of like further but, but i think that's the best way of putting it i think yeah but um the aircraft was lovely uh the crew were friendly they were professional. They were really efficient, uh, and yeah, yeah, aircraft was clean. We we left a little bit late, but we made up quite a lot of time. So yeah, I mean, the, what I left in the review is I said, um, if you can fly with an airline like British Airways 
I would possibly maybe maybe recommend that. But if you can't, there's nothing wrong with the carrier whatsoever. And if you're a UK av geek looking for a wide body on a short haul trip, it's perfect. Mm. They use the 350s and the 330s, the 200s and the 300s. Yeah. <clears throat> so it's, it's, it, they actually have some really cool services that you can get yourself on, and you can all book it. You can book it through like as as a British Airways ticket, and the BA app is is superb. Yeah. So, so out of yeah. curiosity, then obviously Iberia and that, did you manage to jump on the three forties when they were there? No. Ah. Oh. No. I wish I had done that. I wish I'd managed to jump on them, knowing that obviously they weren't um, going to be sticking around for much longer. But obviously, it's yeah. quite rare to see like a wide body of that that kind on a short route and that. So you get used to it and then you think you sort of take it for granted because then you don't realize that actually you could probably jump on it for a, a really good sort of fee and have that experience. And I think yeah, probably the whole sort of pandemic has opened up a lot of people's eyes to kind of go right with for wide bodies on a short haul route. I'm going to make sure I get on it. Oh yeah. hundred percent. And I tried to do the same uh, in March. I booked a BA to Madrid on the Dreamliner because they were using the Dreamliner that month. Yeah. Uh, on the BA four five eight in the kind of like mid morning, uh, it was due to be a seven eight seven there and an A three thirty two hundred on Ooh, the way lovely. back, but I got COVID. <laughs> so oh. I got oh. either. <laughs> so yeah. No way. Yeah. yeah. Um. Evie. Uh. Evie. If uh, If you watch it, she always says. Rem to remind her to never travel with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now you've had some bad luck, haven't you? Sorry. You've had some bad luck. Well, I mean, the last the last two flights I have, yeah, mm. and uh, and then yeah, because it turned out the flight back it that actually had an equipment change as well from a three thirty two hundred to a three fifty, but the three fifty was ECNLP and it was its first revenue service. Wow. Okay. Wow. So. Yeah, yes. But yeah. hey, so you're, getting the, uh, you're getting the train to Glasgow this week, then? No, I'm flying up. I'm flying up. <laughs> Are you sure? Hopefully, well, hopefully, hopefully yeah, fingers three crossed. Three times weekly mm. service, and all three of them got cancelled last week, but today's one went ahead. So hopefully that's a good sign for me. Well, I can't crossed. vouch it takes a while to get from uh, Scotland back home on the train. I found that out the hard way back in January. So, wow. yeah, I might have missed my flight. <laughs> no, 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 no. Why no. did you miss your flight, Steve? Yeah, yeah. Why did you? Yeah, why did you miss your flight? Do tell us what happened. Well, there might have been beer involved. <laughs> <laughs> Time flies when you're enjoying yourself. Yeah, well, the night before, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is it something you've looked into, Matt? Seriously, like doing like flight reviews and things like that, going down like the uh, the Noel Phillips in the Sam Chui sort of route. Um, I was I was kind of hoping to until mm. COVID came. Right. Um, I'd I'd absolutely love to do that. Like I I I love reviewing airlines, whether it's yeah, but you do filming yeah. them, whatever. Like even even seat maps. Like sorry, I know I know this is going to sound so strange, but I could just stare at seat maps for hours <laughs> and then. Yeah, you're you are a bit geeky, aren't you? in a good yeah. way obviously yeah like like there's a there's a there's a website it's actually quite a new website i hope you don't mind me saying uh aero Loper. and oh my god go and check them out they're so that they've got like the, some of the most detailed seat maps i've ever seen like they've, they've even got they've even labeled where the windows are on the side of the fuselage so when you're choosing your seat you can work out where the windows are going to be aligned and then if you go to the ba fleet they've got all the historic fleet as well so they've got all like the 74200s, they've got the 74, they've got the 747 400s, like but back from kind of early 2000s. Wow. It's a really, I could just wow. stare at them all day long. Yeah, I love wow. it. But yeah, no, I, I was, I'd, I'd love to go down the flight review thing, but obviously like yeah. now with studying and also because I'm, I'm only 20 years old, I'm, yeah, I'm still, I'm still a baby. And, um, Back then, kind of pre-COVID, I was young, so it was all, all very expensive as well. But yeah, if I if I can get into it properly, I'd definitely love to. I'll be doing full reviews of the flights next week, for sure. Well, yeah, that'd be awesome to see. Yeah, I'll look out for them. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, uh, so, I'm going well, to try and do something because because it's 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 like it's BA economy, so it's not the most exciting thing in the world. So what I think I'm going to do is I might try and do a kind of side by side comparison to the Club Europe flight to Madrid. Yeah, yeah. Compare yeah. the differences, yeah. 
and be being a cool. shuttle service maybe kind of delve into the history of the super shuttle back in yeah. the day with ba yeah. see what's going on with that. Uh, have, you, have you never tried being part of sdtv tried tapping an airline up to do sort of an you know like airclips.com videos that them type yeah. things with the um, gopros and the cockpit and things like that have you never tried tapping any airline up to do something like that um, well, I haven't really been in the team long enough, I don't think, right. to kind of have have the opportunity. Um, that's that sort of stuff. Ask Chris and Glenn. Right. Week. Okay. Yeah. 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 I'm Fair sure enough. they'll have all the answers for that. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah. I mean, I'm uh, when uh, like on the way to Madrid. Yeah, I mentioned Speedbird TV. They all knew it. They were. They oh, okay. Were right. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, that's yeah. I, I think uh, I'll definitely rep them next week for sure. And uh, say yeah, hello to all the crew on BA. They're so nice all the time. Well, will you have your polo shirt on when you're on the flight? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah I, think you need to, don't you? I think you have to. Yeah, definitely. Don't you know who I am? Yeah. <laughs> I won't do any of that, but like, you know, mm. for the photos as well, get some nice pictures on board, especially when the mm. cabin's empty. They were actually yeah. really nice yeah. uh, on the way back from Madrid. Uh, I went to the gate agent and I was like, "Oh, uh, I'm really sorry. Like, I'm 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 kind of documenting uh, the flight for a magazine. Do you mind? Even though I'm in economy, do you mind if I board with business class so I can be like the first on in economy?" And they let me. So I was Fair there, like, driving around the free A350 cabin, just snapping all oh, these nice. photos whilst there was no one in there. <laughs> they don't were really, ask, really nice. you don't get. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. yeah, yeah, exactly. So mm. I might I might try and do that again. See what happens. I, but, have yeah. you ever had like? Um... I mean, obviously, you, you you know an aircraft inside out, and you've got all this knowledge and stuff like that. Have you ever sat on a plane, you've heard a squeak or a knock or something like that, and thought, this doesn't sound quite right? Uh, no. And 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 if I and if I do, I then find out why it's happened to then find that it's actually. Oh, okay, right. Yeah, that's yeah. fair enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, the, the the only thing the only thing that has happened, which I didn't actually ask uh, the flight crew because I. I just thought it that like, it wouldn't be appropriate, but yeah. they shut down the engines and everyone everyone got up. Then the aircraft started rolling forward, and then yeah. he like hit the brakes, and it everyone kind of like tumbled. <laughs> <out. laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I did reach out to a couple of people, and and they said, oh, it could have been either maybe like the chocks just weren't in so could like rolled into the chocks or something, but. Yeah, yeah, still not sure. It's all right. Yeah, everyone. Yeah, it. that's meant it was all good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah that, as long as they only shut the engines down on ground and not shut. Yeah, as long as they yeah, don't yeah. shut the engines down at thirty-five thousand feet, you're all right, <laughs> aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, we were all on stand safely. So, but yeah, I mean, yeah. I've, I've I've generally been quite lucky with flights. They've all been safe. All the crew have generally been really nice. So, yeah. No, that's yeah, good. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, that's good stuff. What's so, been your um your favourite? Uh, aircraft to be a passenger on so far of oh, the 380 when you fly on a 380 everything else is rubbish <laughs> yeah i think see if you can vouch for that i'm sure well i went i went from a 380 to a easy jet 319 and it was a bit of a culture shock yeah i have to admit <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, when i i i 100 agree even when i did uh the emirates 380 to the emirates triple seven that was bad enough as well <laughs> yeah so, so much louder Oh yeah, that got me. It wasn't even the size; it was the noise. It's just yeah, so you... loud compared to the three hundred and eighty. Everything like, about the three hundred and eighty is so smooth; it's ridiculous from the takeoff yeah. to the landing. You don't know; you don't. You almost don't know that things are happening. It's that yeah. incredible. Yeah, it actually messes around with your senses, like, yeah, especially yeah. when you're climbing out. And it like the 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 noise the noise climbing out of Heathrow on the 380 was the same noise level as having like the air conditioning on high on an A320 with the engine switched off. Yeah. Coming out of um, Frankfurt, it was pretty cool because my seat was actually backwards facing. So I was looking at the, uh, oh, at that, the engines and that was, as it came out of the, uh, showing off there. Were you in club, uh, club world? It might've been cheap when I booked it. Don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Very yeah, nice. stop rubbing it in, Steve. Yeah. Well, no, he, he's all good. He's been on more three eighties than me, so we have his moment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, went, I went from business class on three eighty down to an A three nineteen cattle yeah. class. Mm. That's why I couldn't fly back on it. It just felt a bit bit below me, to be honest. <laughs> oh, dear. oh dear, dearie me. <laughs> 
how 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 it gets to people, honestly. Yeah, um, I know, right. We'll, we'll, we'll put you on the spot, Matthew. Um, so, in terms of like the flights that you've either been on or reviewed, which one's been your favourite? Uh, Emirates are up there. Emirates are up there. Um, I, the, Emirates is it's a bit harder because I flew them in 2016. Hmm. So they've I'm sure they've changed a lot since then. So it's probably quite an outdated view. But Emirates, they did everything right. I mean, everything from a comfortable seat to having literally Polaroid cameras with cabin crew with like messages that they would leave you. Everything. Oh, wow. They were they were they were incredible. Mm. Emirates and uh, the three eighties themselves were just insane, as 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 we've discussed. And yeah, I mean, I I wouldn't hesitate to fly them again. I'd fly them in a heartbeat. Um, in terms of the newest reviews. Uh, I quite enjoyed. I quite enjoyed that BA flight to Madrid, uh, in Club Europe. That was quite nice. But Finnair, I think Finnair is probably where it's at on Good their three hundred and fifty. That that was that was amazing. Yeah. I think it was. I think the thing with Finnair, I think they're just quite underrated. Like no one seems to give them much attention. Now it's a, now a bit more because I've got their new business class seat out which has had quite a few influential people review it. Mm. But but like back when I flew them in, what was it, 2018? They, they were just another kind of European airline. But they did everything right from start to finish. Mm. Comfy seat, crew were amazing. Catering was lovely. Couldn't fault them. And, and, and Helsinki was a lovely city, a lovely hub they've got. Yeah. So, yeah, Finnair, Finnair's up there for sure. Very underrated, I think. Finnair, the the ones that like sort of go about their business very quietly. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, I was, I was going to say the same kind of thing about them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know how many flights you've taken? What since you started doing these sort of videos and reviews on that? Uh, I'm not sure about an exact number because sometimes I don't review all of them because um, so we, we've got some family out in Sicily. And like I might fly to Sicily once or twice a year, and the flight is exactly the same, so I just yeah, won't bother yeah. with it. Um, yeah, no, I, I'm not sure how to put a number, but yeah, I mean, fortunate enough to, to like get about a fair bit, see some family and friends around, and yeah, fly. <laughs> so yeah. Every every flight's a good one. Like I get mm. I get quite uh, angry when I see business people who like fly every week, and they're like they're taking <laughs> it all for granted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It kind of, I'm like, oh, you know. Yeah, no, I, I always make the most of, of, of every everyone. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> a question from uh, Transatlantic Alison asking if you've been on Thai. Be interesting to know uh, that she's flying on them next month. Uh, I've not flown with Thai, no. Uh, the closest I've done was Vietnam Airlines, though. That was good fun. That was um, that was uh, A330-200s domestically around around vietnam but yeah um i yeah i'm not sure i've heard they're all right but i'm not sure i i'm sure online you can find loads of reviews so i'm not sure i'm afraid but i'm sure yeah. they're good generally I've heard good things about time is the further yeah. east you go the better the airlines get that's kind of generally <laughs> you know, the consensus works, so yeah I'm sure yeah, yeah. it's worth bearing in mind mm, yeah yeah, wonderful. Um, I suppose we could go on to maybe what the worst one is, whether you've reviewed it or uh, not. I don't know. I mean... I've, Bearing I in like, mind, you might be working for them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I've, uh, I've, been quite, I've been quite lucky, to be honest, uh, with airlines. Uh, yeah, I can't, yeah I, as I've said, I just, I just try and make the most out of all of them. I'm lucky in that I haven't, I haven't really had many yet to touch wood like cancellations or been kind of mucked about by airlines or anything and like the crew the crew that like, they've always been nice i've kind of learned my little tricks to not annoy them like especially with like flight deck visits like kind of like I've, i learned if you try and ask them during cruise then they're expecting you when you deboard as opposed to catching them by surprise and then they seem to kind of get a bit mm, you know yeah that was like, um a bit confused yeah, no, I've I've generally been quite lucky. That was a, a regret of that three eighty flight. I was offered a chance to um, go up to the flight deck when we landed in Frankfurt. Yeah, but because I was slightly panicked about making it back, I declined it. Yeah. And then when we got to Heathrow, the change of um, captain, he didn't want anyone in when we landed, oh, so no. I missed the opportunity, which was um, yeah, unfortunate. Yeah, 
but oh, really you live annoying. and learn. Yeah, I'm that's sure you'll get on it in. soon. <laughs> well, yeah, um, and then to keep theirs until like 2034. I think BA are quite similar, so yeah, 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 that's fine. Uh, Magjet TV Live says, Have you flown with Virgin Atlantic? I did in 2005, <laughs> so I can't really remember <laughs> much, sadly. Do you um, remember any of it? <laughs> all I remember was uh, was watching some Disney films on it. That's all I that's all I remember. Um, well, I do I do have a photo uh, that I think one of the family took. It's uh, me and my uh, grandma. We're going down the Travelator at San Fran, and outside the big glass window was our aircraft, and it was a GV Big. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. One of the seven fours. Seven but, four, yeah, seven, I, yeah, I don't I don't remember much of it, but. <laughs> Um, my auntie who lived in San Francisco, that was her airline of choice to come to and from. So they were obviously doing something right back then. And even now they seem to be. Yeah. Yeah, it so, seems to be sort of back on the up again after a little bit of a um a blip sort of last couple yeah. of years. Now they seem to be sort of um you know, like I say, back on back on their feet and stuff. And it's an airline that I kind of want to fly with as well. So I'm sure I'll make it happen at some point, but yeah. it's good to know. Uh, very interesting comment from Vision International saying, my dad worked in Russia about 20 years ago, had to go to Siberia. In-flight meal was an apple. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. I mean, it's better than the low-cost carriers now. Yeah. Yeah, true enough. <laughs> yeah. Bottle of yeah. water and I think that's about it. And then some crackers to wash down with or something. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, wonderful. Um, yeah, Virgin Atlantic, just quickly, they've always been really fair with uh, the way they bought their aircraft, haven't they? They've always had like the 747s and the 340s and this era they've got the Dreamliners and the 350s and oh, well, and the 330. But they've always they've always sort of spread between Boeing and Airbus fairly uh, sort yeah. of fair, haven't they? Rather than have a, a single uh, supplier, which is quite impressive in a, in a sense. Yeah. It's quite unusual, I think. Yeah, I'd say, I'd say it's quite unusual because you'd think they'd want to stick with one to keep the maintenance costs down, but they're obviously friendly with them both. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I know at some point you want to change type. Yeah, I know. I know at some point they're supposed to. Um, they're supposed to operate. I think like one of the youngest fleets in the industry. I think once the oh, uh, the three thirty neos. I think that they they've ordered. Um, yeah. come into into service they will start retiring some of the older planes and then they actually will own like one of the youngest fleets uh, yeah. out there I mean like the, the 230s the Dreamliners are else. gone they are gone now the 200s I think the last yeah. one's at Heathrow doing its last bits of maintenance before they ship it out to wherever and then I think the average age of the 330 300s is about 10 years and then the Dreamliners and the 350s and the 330s that's just going to shrink down the average age massively I guess isn't it Mm. Yeah, that's good. Good yeah. news for Virgin. Transatlantic Allison uh, reiterating my point of uh, obviously when they get the Neos. Of course, she flies with uh, the Virgin uh, Virgin Atlantic um, uh, uh, the three thirties. So oh, brilliant! She, wow. she knows the ins and outs and stuff. So lovely. Very good. Former guest on the show, and I like to say friend of the show as well. But uh, yeah, oh. no, she yeah. So what they will eventually run one of the, the youngest fleets, I think, in the world. I think nice. once the three thirty well, Neos come in, which would be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> which would be very very interesting indeed um just gonna try and run through a couple of comments here that i think it's just been going literally all evening so i'm just trying to see if we've missed any comments here um do talk amongst yourselves no i was problem. just gonna say i love the fact you can fly from heathrow on a dreamliner and then pick your flight so you can get to come back on a 350 with uh yeah I'd, I'd 100% be doing that if I uh, had the yeah. means to be going to New York anytime soon, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, New York, they use a mixture of all of them, don't they? So that'd be that'd be brilliant. Mm. Yeah. I said previously, it saddens me that BA use treble sevens for uh, the New York route. Or they should be using 350s because it's meant to be the flagship route. And I think they should be using yeah. flag, flag route planes. The, I think they don't use the 350s because they haven't kitted out first class in them. No, uh, is that so? Yeah, so I think they've got uh, 56 of the Club World suites and then Premium Economy and Economy down the back. Whereas the 777s that they use, they've got those kind of small eight first class. Yeah, yeah. Like the, like the kind of eight seat first class cabin and then the retrofit Club suites behind it. So yeah, that would make sense then. 
Yeah, I'd imagine that's possibly why. But yeah, because I was talking to one of the um, guys at Dunsfold. So he, he, he's been working with, he was work well, he's not working with BA anymore, but was working with BA from 1971 until 2019. Wow. And um, he said that apparently the 350s were originally meant to have first class fitted, like the small kind of eight seat first class cabin. Uh, but then they, they stopped putting first in and they changed the order to make it just business. But they apparently didn't modify the galleys enough to be equipped for those 56 seats. Hmm. So it said that getting to, getting to know how to use the 350s galleys was a real challenge because they felt like they just couldn't get the food out quick enough to serve everyone. Oh, right. Really? Yeah, so... Yeah, that was, there you no, go, Steve, cool. there's your answer. Yeah, well, there you go. Every day's a school day. It yeah, is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even on a bank holiday. Yeah. But yes, uh, obviously, um, you're not the only one, uh, Steve, that obviously uh, goes about the uh, the whole sort of why BA don't use the uh, 350s and they only use the 777s on New York because Glenn is also in the same boat saying, don't get me started on the 777, the 777s to oh. New York. <laughs> yeah, uh, we'll let him talk about that uh, next week. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm intrigued by that now. Very yeah, intrigued. No, I, I, yeah, no, it's, 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 it's an interesting one he's got there. So We'll save that for next week, I yeah, think. We'll yeah, save that definitely. for next week. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, let's just have a look here at some other... So, uh, Jake, I know, has been commenting as well. He says, I've looked at Finnair from Manchester out to Bangkok, so I can go on uh, 350, great value and connections too. Um do which it. I imagine goes with sort of what we were talking about earlier with uh, Finnair and that obviously going about their business quite quietly. Were Finnair sort of reasonably priced for what you yeah. what you had? Yeah. So um, my, I, mean, I, I didn't use any points or anything. So the business class ticket return was, I think, about £650 there and back in business. BA were charging 900 for the club year upon the 320. Whereas wow. Finnair was the 350. That's a big yeah. difference, that, isn't it, really? Yeah, mm. yeah. so that, that, that's why, why I just went for it. I kind of had a bit of a mm. sod it moment. And just, ah, come on. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Have you flown business class often? Or no, is it... no. Honestly, uh, that Finnair and the uh, Madrid last-minute upgrade. Yeah. All the rest down the back. Just sat in back. We, every, we all commoners. <laughs> Common, yeah, 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 exactly. exactly. As Steve would call them, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. The peasants, yeah, not peasants, yeah. yeah. My fruit yeah. of champagne, yeah. <laughs> while everyone else is sipping on fruit shoots, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, most of it's, yeah, yeah, they're, uh, yeah, they're pretty much all done in down in economy, which I, I think is often quite good. Because it's you can get you can get a quite a good idea of what an airline is like down. In the That's it. You get a true reflection of everything, don't you? When you sat with everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Definitely. But, yeah. I mean, and some of these first class suites and what have you, just absolutely out of this world, aren't they? To be quite honest. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the Emirates like one. Yeah. Mm. So what was that, Steve? As I said, particularly the Emirates first class is like yeah. bonkers, absolutely yeah. bonkers. Yeah, and mm. I mean, like the the. Like the Etihad residents and the Singapore suites as well. Yeah. I can't wait to see the residents back in service. I think I I, I reckon that Etihad will bring their three eighties back. So yeah, so I think Steve Steve would probably call it the yeah, cattle class as well as Jake's yeah. called it. Only ever been in cattle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's the cattle class. There you go. It's not all fun in games and business. You get a sore finger and thumb by going like that. Champagne. <laughs> <laughs> And then, the hang- and then the hangover the next day. Yeah, yeah. 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 To where you that. miss your flight. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I couldn't face going back on EasyJet. Like I said earlier on, it was beneath me. I just beneath. Yeah. <laughs> I had to get the train. Uh, no. How disgusting! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, common Excellent. people. Ugh. Yeah, yeah. Ugh, commoners. Ugh, cattle. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, honestly. Uh, so, as a lasting thing, um, what is sort of next for Matteo? What's 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 next going forward for you in terms of YouTube channel and just you in general? Of course, with your uh, obviously your lessons out in in America and that. It's very hard to say, to be honest. Um, you'll have to ask me again when I'm in the states. I think because uh, I'll I pop have... you a message. Yeah, because <laughs> uh, I mean, I have. 
I have no idea what it's going to be like out there because my lot going out, we're, we're, we're some of the first lot. So we don't know anyone out there to tell us what it's like. Mm. Um, in terms of like all the kind of YouTube stuff, I've, I've always kept it as a hobby. Being a full-time student, you can't, you, you can only do as much as you can do with it. Of course. Um, but in terms of Speedbird TV, I will be there for them even when I'm there. Mm. I'm hoping to maybe get down to Miami at some point, see if I can do a couple of bits and bobs for them from there. Especially with the time difference, it'll work out perfect. Like on a Friday mm. night, I go to Miami during the day and then cut to Chris in London City in the evening. <laughs> yeah, yeah so, be fantastic, wouldn't it? It'd be yeah, awesome. I just need to see, mm. what's, see what it's like because I'm only going to have my phone out there. I'm not going to have any of the snazzy... snazzy no, no, no. So, um, yeah, I just need to see what happens. Uh, I'm hoping to maybe go down to things like the Delta Museum in Atlanta. So I'll definitely try and make a few bits on that, uh, like with some video and photos and whatnot, put some stuff together for mm -hmm. well, both channels, pretty much. Yeah, just, that. just don't go live from there, will you? Yeah, well, I watched off a video on the Delta um, Museum the other week from somebody. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, but it, it looks like a really good museum, and I'd, I'd really like to go there. Mm, some um, good yeah, stuff there. some very good yeah, stuff there. yeah, yeah. No, definitely yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah but i mean the main focus is is the flying and the cpl so absolutely yeah, yeah yeah look after yourself first can i ask you about the cars what are in the background they've been catching me eye all night oh yeah that, so yeah they're just uh that's just some some of my models over there so that you got the cars over there and then you got you got the aircraft over there there you <laughs> go yeah nice. so you, you like your cars as well then yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I'm not quite as car crazy as I am about the planes, no. but yeah, quite like. Yeah. I like my transport in general. I like my trains right. as well. I All right, I'm not them, but yeah, yeah. I was going to ask you about your Italian heritage. Is that where the car love comes from? Uh, maybe, maybe, yeah. but yeah. I mean, I, I'm pretty much born and bred as English, and then just my roots go back to Italy and Sicily. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, we, we, we've got some family out there. We go down there every now and again. We haven't been for a while because of COVID, but yeah, before yeah, it was, yeah, what a shame. It was an annual trip to see the family down there before, which was great. Yeah, but it was, all flights, yeah. In, like, flying into Catania is always good fun. S sit on the left hand side, you're basically circling around Mount Etna. Oh, oh all right, right, right. Wow. yeah, so that's always a great view. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah fantastic. Yeah, easy, jet, easy jet always do a nice service down there so yeah lovely job right we'll go through uh some of the last comments that we have here um so uh in regards to what we were talking about with steve obviously drinking too much missing his flight gail leary says you can get hung over <laughs> on emirates in cattle class obviously experience That's it. Uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> One um, on the ground's worth two in the sky, just so you remember. <laughs> <laughs> well, no way around, sorry. Yeah. Visions International saying Matteo is going to become a pilot and a social media star, as mm. most pilots seem to seem to do. Yeah. Seems to be like the, the uh, next best thing now is to go be a pilot if you want to get noticed, I think, at the moment. So, well, yeah, I never mean, know. You should never do it for the universe, do it, do it for the passion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You, you never, you never know. Uh, Jack Rolls uh, is asking, um, are you? A, just, he asks random questions. He really does. Uh, are you a fan of Frontier Airlines? They've got some beautiful liveries on them. I'm desperate to catch one. I will do my very best to fly them when I'm out there. I found they, yeah. they, they can take you to, to Miami from Orlando for like forty dollars return. So wow, oh, nice. if I can hop on it. I'm on it. Yeah, Spirit. From, I'd love to try them all. So. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Uh, also, because of your Italian heritage. Um, Visions International going, hmm, Mafia Matteo. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I was thinking that when he said Sicily, but I refrained from it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking of horses' heads and things like that, but yeah. God no, no, keep me gobshot. Yeah, Scarface yeah. and all that. Yeah, mm. Ken, was, Ken was worried that if he makes me angry there, that I'll do stuff to him. <laughs> Don't worry, Ken. <laughs> you're safe. <laughs> you're safe. Oh, dear. Yeah. I do drive an Italian car, but it's not one Italy are going to be particularly proud of in the state it's in these days, to be honest. <laughs> what is it? What is it? Um, well, it's an Alpha, but it's rusted through now, so it's on its last <laughs> oh, legs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. I love a good Alpha. Yeah, that, that, that's a classic with Italian cars. Look pretty, but don't work. Mm. Yeah. It sounds so, a bit like the ex missus. <laughs> <laughs> and she's watching tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Um, a couple, right, a couple more, and we'll start to uh, wrap the show up. So, Max Jet TV Live says, "When are you going to go to Dubai, Matteo?" Uh, I've I've got no plans to go there. Got no, no plans. plans. To go there. Would like to. Would like to go back, but yeah, nothing, nothing planned. Good, good stuff. Darren Smith says, "Matt, what will Chris uh, do for his information when you're not there on a Saturday?" Mm. Chris. Chris is a legend. He he he's he's brilliant behind the camera. So he'll he's going to be great. He's going to be great. And uh, but I, I am going to seriously miss streaming with him. I really am. Like I've I've mm. really really enjoyed it because I, I I was telling you guys um, the other day before I came on that I was doing a couple of live streams here and there on my channel just on my phone. So I was kind of focusing a lot more on the talking because the camera work was never that brilliant. <clears throat> Mm. But when I finally joined Chris, having him and his character behind the camera being as engaging as he is with his brilliant tech and brilliant camera work. And then I felt like I could join him and I felt like we kind of I felt like we worked quite well together. Glenn calls us the Chuckle Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we're going to get some stories on that next week. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, you have to talk to Glenn about that one. I, I don't really know where it comes from, but yeah, no, it's it's it's, it's been great, and uh, and uh, Chris is going to carry on doing the amazing job he does. I know that for a fact. Absolutely, mm. yeah, yeah, he does a wonderful job with um, the enthusiasm and 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 that with obviously the the love of aviation. Oh uh, yeah, no, so, he loves yeah, it. it definitely loves gets it. portrayed over the streams and that. So I mean, yeah, we say to yeah. him like, "Do you even sleep?" <clears throat> like yeah. he, he he finishes <laughs> city at like half eight, and he says, "Oh, oh you know, I need to." get home i need to unwind i'm probably not going to get home and uh, i'm probably not going to get to sleep till about one o'clock in the morning and then the following morning at 7 a.m we get it we get a notification he's live at heathrow mm. <laughs> we're like, <laughs> like do you sleep <laughs> the, the 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 um the notification from actually yesterday morning was what actually woke me up that's why i was on the stream that's why i was, <laughs> I was commenting i thought who the hell was doing that uh, <laughs> yeah i was just like right okay cool <laughs> yeah but um, yeah, no, no, he's 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 a legend, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna miss him for sure. Good stuff. Just bear with me two seconds. We've got no uh, problem. A little bit of a. Uh... There's a question from uh, Transatlantic Allison in there again. Who are you flying with to Orlando? We're not sure yet. Um, I got quite bored at one point, so I made an entire schedule of all the flights that leave Heathrow, Gatwick, and Manchester. <laughs> Uh, just so I could have it all handy when they, if they were to give me the option. Um, we've been told that apparently we're going to be given the option of Heathrow or Manchester um, and not Gatwick. So that basically narrows it down to a BA777 or Virgin and their 350s because I'm not going to go for, I'm, I'm not going to do Manchester because that's way too far. So yeah, yeah BA or Virgin. So, uh, Alison, who knows? We might be on the same flight. You could very well be yeah. on the same flight. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it could yeah, very well. Booked. We were just waiting for all the paperwork, and then when all that's done, it'll all be booked. One, two, four. Yeah. <clears throat> right, that's fine. Just, yeah, got a little bit of spam there, so I'll just, just mm. have to edit that out, so that's fine. Um, right, so uh, Jack Rolls, last comment, and then we'll start wrapping it up. It says, Matt, I did follow you on Instagram. Keep up the amazing content. Um, Speedbird TV, are lucky to have you. Oh, thank you very much, Jack. Really appreciate that. That's a, Yeah, that's a nice comment, that. Thank you. Good stuff. And of course, Alison there saying, we'll say hi if you do. Yeah, mm. we'll do, Alison. Look forward to it. Alison's lovely. Yeah, yeah, she does does a lot for the industry. So definitely worth saying hello to her. Definitely, definitely yeah. Her. Mm. Absolutely. Right, wonderful stuff. So uh, we're going to begin to wrap the show up now. Um, but before we do, we're going to jump into our regular segment, which is, of course, doing some shout outs now as i'll quickly mention there is still time to enter if you want to enter the <laughs> i wish you did <laughs> paid tom to say that i'm still waiting for the check to go through um but yes uh if you if you still want to enter the giveaway you can if you want to super chat five pound or more uh, otherwise jack rolls will be getting them free merch and i want to give it to him um <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so if you want to enter that, you can. There's still time to do that before we end. However, uh, we are going to do some shout-outs. So, Matteo, we're going to put you on the spot um, and okay. get you to do some shout-outs to whoever you like. And if anyone in the comments or in the chat 
who's still watching has any shout outs for anybody, put them into the chat. We'll show them as we do ours. So, this, Matthew, take this it This is away. limitless, isn't it? Literally yep. limitless, as right, many people okay. you like. So, first of all, all the Speedbird TV lot. So, that's uh, Chris, Glenn, Jace, Tom, Sophie, Evie, uh, oh, uh, Zul. Who else? There's more, there's more, there's more. Uh, Ooh, don't Dave forget, and, don't forget uh, Chris them. Billingham. Uh, big shout out to all of you. Uh, you're all legends. Uh, also, a uh, big shout out to Ken and Sarah uh, over from Visions. Uh, thank you for all your great work. And uh, everyone down at, uh, who, uh, all the regulars who are down at Heathrow, uh, all my friends down there. Uh, I always say when you, when you go to Heathrow as much as, as much as you do it, then it becomes more about the people in the plane sometimes. It's basically mm. like a kind of bit of a social getaway. Um, yes, yeah, so a massive shout out to everyone down at Heathrow. Uh, massive shout out to uh, all my course mates who are uh, we're all going through the same tough stuff together. Uh, big shout out to that. And a uh, big shout out to you guys. Thank you so much for having me on tonight. Uh, it's been it's been really good fun. And hopefully we'll do it again sometime. Absolutely. Yeah. Maybe when you come back from America, you can tell us all about that then. Yeah. Sure <laughs> Look forward to it. Fantastic. Brilliant. Uh, right. So, Ian, over to you for the shout outs. Yeah, just a massive shout out to everyone um, who's been tuning in tonight and watching the show tonight. Um, I will say a massive shout out to someone called Jace, I think, who's part of your Speedbird TV um, crew, Matt, who I think you've missed. Yeah, I said Jace. Oh, did you say him? Right. I've just, uh, I just saw a comment from Visions, Visions International saying Jace. So I thought you'd missed him. So yeah, I no, just, no, no. I thought I'd just slip that one in and drop you right no, in it. Jace is there. No, yeah. no, Jace is brilliant. He's lovely. Yeah. He's great. Right, yeah. So, yeah, massive shout out to you, Matt, for tonight. It's been absolutely, it's, it's been brilliant. It really, really has. I haven't really scratched Thank the you. surface of what you, of your knowledge because listening, watching Speedbird TV and listening to what you talk about, it, it, it's an education all the time. It is for me anyway because you, you talk about a lot of things. And there's always yeah. something I'd wanted to wash him. I'm a, I play a Microsoft Flight Sim, and I cannot get my head around the ILS approaches. I can do it on FS2000, uh -huh. but I can't do it on the new Flight Sim. And it was something I was going to tap you up about, but we're not going to it now. Yeah, it, yeah, of course. It'll yeah, probably yeah, yeah. take a bit too long, to be quite honest. Yeah, yeah I just, I, I can't, I can't tune, in. I can't tune into ILS frequency for some reason. Okay. Yeah, well, I don't I mean, know why, but yeah, I mean, we can definitely look into that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, anyway, apart from that, just just massive thanks to everyone who's who's been involved tonight and everything. It's uh, it's been a cracking show. It really, really has. So that's me, Don Tom. Do you want to fulfil the comment? Uh, Dad, please, can I have a shout out? Yeah, big shout out to my daughter Tina, who's commented <laughs> a few times tonight, but I've managed to ignore him. She did. She did say at one point that guy in the left hand corner looks really weird. <laughs> <laughs> and there was also another another comment. Uh, I think it was Max Jet TV Live who said that my clock wasn't working. It is working. <laughs> it's just not necessarily right. <laughs> um, <laughs> it, it, it is actually right, but it's obviously because of the screen being back to front, it looks wrong, but it's not. Fair enough. Yeah, so that's me done. Fair enough. Right, Steve, over to you. Yeah, lovely. Um, Matt, again, legend, and looking forward to hearing about your training in America and all the best of it and Thank all you. your other projects and that, and appreciate you coming on. Um having me. Everyone in, in the chat, particularly Transatlantic Allison, if you don't follow her on Twitter, she does um, a lot of, uh, sorry, on Instagram, she does a lot of uh, Insta Lives, and it's a, a great window into the, the industry, and she'll let you know where she's been, and you get to be jealous when she's ended up in Bridgetown, etc. Mm. Um. I'll give uh, Tia her own little shout out. She uh, still has a, a fan piece on my fridge, if you can see it down there. I don't know if you can. She drew me a nice picture a little while ago of Pepper the Pig and sent it down. So that was very nice of her. <laughs> that lives in my fridge. Yeah. And uh, just to reiterate, my uh, my big brother's uh, birthday tomorrow. Like I, I don't know if you're still watching, but I hope you have a, a good day. Um, Having me as a brother, I'm sure, has been nothing but disappointment. So when I don't give you a birthday <laughs> present tomorrow, it will just be a continuation of that. <laughs> but I will take the time to uh, to ring you up because I'm not a total git. So, yeah. <laughs> and uh, obviously Tom and Ian as ever. So cheers, cheers lads. Fair enough. Good 
Good just stuff. say a big shout out to Loopy as well. It's his birthday as well today, isn't it? So, yeah, happy birthday, Loopy. I saw this comment here. Transatlantic Alice is saying, "If you're at Heathrow on the fifth, I'll wave as I blast off. I'm there on the sixth. <laughs> if you want to kind of delay it for like 24 hours, that'd kind of be great. Um, <laughs> but obviously, won't happen. But that's a shame, uh, really. Um, but yeah." Uh, okay, I'll do some shout outs. Uh, so, firstly, uh, Matteo, thank you for joining us. Um, obviously, giving us some knowledge, and obviously, not just us, but obviously, when Speedbell are live and that, and obviously, filling people in about uh, you know, particular planes and, um, and everything about them. So, a big shout out to you. And of course, like I said, thank you for, for joining us. And you're more than welcome to come on again at any time. Thank you. Anytime, um, Steve and Ian, of course, for another stellar job. That's no pun to what Ian's drinking tonight. That's just <laughs> a good job. Um, there Cheers. it is. That could, yeah, uh, inspired so by a visions aviation. That's it. Yeah, I wanna, actually, I'll tell you what, I want only bottles of wine Ken's got through during this show. <laughs> yeah, wine and gravy. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm curious, curious to know. I'll put it in the chat in a minute. Um, but no, big shout out to you too. Uh, shout out to everybody who's watched. Um, this evening, um, a shout out to uh, Jack Rolls uh, for the super chats. Um, shout out to my old school buddy James Story. I don't know if he's still watching or not. Um, haven't heard from him for a while, and then he piped in yesterday, and then found the channel, which I was like, okay, cool, nice one. Didn't actually expect that, um, but hopefully he's still watching. So that's a shout out to him, um, and then of course to all of. <laughs> One bottle he's got through. That's that, <laughs> that's disappointing. That is. Yeah. Have you noticed this size of bottle of you? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a magnum. Magnum. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah. It's all about yeah. Size does matter eventually. But yes. Uh, so yes, yeah, a big shout out to everybody watching, and of course, uh, key workers, frontline workers, a lot across the world. Um, have I missed anything? I think, I think that's pretty much. Pretty much that. Uh, next week, of course, we haven't, you know, like we haven't made it obvious enough. Um, but the Speedbird TV gang are joining us next week, mm. uh, which should be a lot of fun. Um, most of them, if not all of them, are joining us. So it's going to be a little bit chaotic, but it's going to be interesting oh, yeah. nonetheless. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's going to be interesting nonetheless. Uh, so, yeah, so Speedbird TV, the, the whole lot, Chris, Glenn. Yeah. Uh, Will you be there, Matt, as well? Uh, believe so unless yeah, yeah, he, he could crew, be yeah, yeah he yeah. could be there yeah yeah, yeah. i don't actually yeah, know the names of, of who's actually agreed to do it yeah. so i'm still waiting we'll on the names of people who actually have week. said to me yeah i'm still waiting for like the list of people because mm-hmm. you only get 10 people on this stream at one time so <laughs> okay. i've got to, got to kind of streamline it as much as i can but yeah um but yeah, should be should be absolutely fine. Or as Darren Smith calls it celebrity squares because it literally <laughs> will be tiny squares next week so <laughs> So it'd be, uh, it'd be interesting. But yeah, they're joining us next week. Um, so uh, if you want to follow uh, Matteo on the social medias, we'll just bring that up now. Uh, you can obviously find him on YouTube. I think your YouTube channel is your your name, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just yeah. my name. I just wanted yeah, to put nice that in there. Otherwise, yeah, otherwise, I've got it wrong. But you can also follow him on Instagram as well. Uh, well worth follow. Thank you. Um, also... Uh, if you're watching on YouTube for the first time and wondering who are Visions Aviation, go find them on Facebook, give them a like, give them a follow, etc. And, of course, subscribe to them on YouTube. They're legends. Well worth doing so. Um, yeah, that is right. I'm just looking at that. It looks a bit weird, but, yeah. Uh, so that's absolutely fine. So, yeah, so go follow them. Um, just literally quickly running down the whole social media side of things. Uh, so uh, you can find the channel. On Twitter, if you want to keep up to date with everything that's going on, uh, you can also like us on Facebook, where I tend to not post much on there, but we try to do it as much as we can. Mm. Uh, And of course, if you want to see some old school plane pictures, that's right, I put them on the Instagram there, uh, so you can follow that as well. But if that doesn't tickle your fancy, and you'd rather follow Steve on Instagram, of course you can, at Steve underscore planes. And, of course, if you like to follow Ian, uh, you can find him at the underscore plane underscore place. Job done. So, 
all that is left to do now is to say our goodbyes. Matthew, when we, I, I, we normally say this off screen, but I, I completely forgot and I haven't done it for the last couple of weeks, but don't go anywhere when we say goodbye because people tend to just disappear. So there's, okay. there's a little bit of an after party afterwards, but not like... No just, worries. I'm going to say that live anyway because go for it. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so we'll say our goodbyes. So we're going to start with, I'll tell you what, we'll go Ian first this time. Ian, if you'd like to say your goodbyes to the people still watching. Yep. Uh, just just see you all next week. See everybody everyone in chat next week. And uh, hopefully you as well, Matt, and um, you, Stephen, you, Tom. And there was a comment from my daughter. Yeah, yeah, Tien saying that she's buzzing for next week. Hopefully she'll be on soon. We'll do a Peppa no. Pig special, I think. Yeah, yeah. Her, her, love, for, <laughs> her love for aviation goes as far as, I don't know, I don't know, end it from room, I suppose. I don't know. She hasn't like your she love hasn't of Chutney. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, no, just uh, thanks for everyone for joining in tonight. It's been a fantastic show again. A few issues when we started, but we managed to iron them out. And um, see you all again next week. So, goodbye, everyone. Good stuff. There he Take goes. care, everyone. Have a good one. No, no, one by one. It's fine. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> one by sorry, one. It's sorry. all right. No, it's all right. Uh, Glenn's obviously looking forward to next week as well. Just putting that in there. Oh, yeah. Uh, but we'll go from there. Right. Matteo, if you'd like to say goodbye to the wonderful people still watching. So, uh, to everyone who's tuned in, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, I've had a, I've had a brilliant evening. Uh, it's been really nice. Uh, just chatting aeroplanes. Like, what more could you want? That's so, why we're uh, here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, uh, thank you for tuning in, everyone. And um, it's, it's going to sound a bit like a Spiva TV stream now, but just like, like, uh, like Tom's stream, like, like, like. That's uh, <laughs> that's all they ask. <laughs> I'll take and, it. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to be on next week. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I mean, we've seen some names here who've popped up right at the very beginning and have stuck right until the very end. So mm. thank you very much, and apologies uh, for me having my issues on my end getting in <laughs> earlier. <laughs> so. Yeah, so thank you very much, everyone, and uh, have a good bank holiday. Yeah, well, thanks, boy, we'll see you next week. <laughs> yeah. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. All right, Steve, in the most typical fashion as to why you have a T-shirt in the first place, take it away. Whoa. Right. Here it is. It's still in the shop. There it is. <laughs> I love it. I know what you're thinking. You didn't expect me to be that slim in real life, but there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. <laughs> right then, uh, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. Um, cheerio, my lovelies. Stay safe, stay sexy, and until next time, look after yourselves. Have a banging week. Cheerio now. Fantastic. Can't get enough of that. It's wonderful. Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, also, uh, Jack Rolls will be the recipient of free merch. Uh, I'll give her a message after the stream. But thank you, everybody, watching. We'll see you next week, 7.30 uh, p.m. Um, next Sunday. Uh, but for now, have a fantastic rest of the bank holiday. Um, have a fantastic week. Uh, and we'll see you next week for another episode, episode 60. Uh, so take care, everybody. See you next week. Bye! <laughs>